Hey guys, what is going on? It's Brycat23 here with X Trades. Today we're going over some member requested tickers. One is Baidu, the other is Amazon, and then the other is Disney. Now, Disney doesn't really have a setup that I'm going to go into a lot of detail about because I do think it's very much still kind of ranging. So more of the technicals are going to be focused on Baidu and Amazon. Now, Baidu has my favorite technical setup because it really looks like we're, we've just broken out of this double bottom reversal. So really what we're looking at here, again, is we, we have this downtrend that's formed. And off of that downtrend, we took a bounce, went up to this what's called the neckline, uh, rejected the neckline, and came down and retested roughly the same price level, give or take a few percentage points, and then bounced up towards the neckline again. And we broke out above the neckline and are now still trading above it. So a few things to talk about here. With these double bottoms, the percentage meeting price target is pretty good. So you're looking at about a 65% meeting price target once you do break out of the trend line resistance or the neckline. So I do feel pretty comfortable about the potential for a decent run. However, you do have to keep in mind that when we have these throwbacks in price towards, uh, towards the old resistance area, it does kind of lessen the, the percentage move that you could expect to see after the breakout. So the performance isn't quite as strong once you get a throwback. So it's, it's not the most ideal situation, but again, it is tradable because if this is the low volume pullback that I do expect it to be, then we will take a bounce off of support and we'll probably find a nice reversal candle in here over the next day or two. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. And there could still be a strong move in price because again, this 65% meeting price target does include throwbacks and non-throwbacks alike. So that's just kind of like the blended average. So again, it, it doesn't mean that this doesn't have the potential to move far just because there is a throwback to the support zone. So definitely think that this is a, is a pretty strong play overall, and I would keep a watch out for it over the next couple of days. And I think that there's potential for it to run right into that 215 or 216 price area. So again, the reason that I say that is with these double bottoms, you take the distance between the neckline and uh, the double bottom area. So again, where those two supports formed uh, when prices rejected from the neckline and when prices first came down in the downtrend. So we're looking at that 183 price range, 182 price range. So that's really what we're taking. And then obviously we know that our neckline is right around that 203 price area. So again, it's the spread in between those, which is right around 20, $21. Uh, again, give or take a couple cents. And then we multiply that by our 65% meeting price target, which gives us roughly a $13 move. Um, and then we take that 203 neckline resistance and add that $13 move to get our kind of price target, uh, provided we stay above this old neckline uh, and what should now be acting as a support. So that's kind of what we're seeing. And again, it's nice when you see these price targets have confluence with areas that were previously areas of support. So obviously this 215, 216 price area, you can see previously there was some higher volume concentration in these areas, judging by, uh, judging by the candles that occurred here. Just again, the count of candles and the amount of consolidation that we had along this price range. So you can definitely see that this will be a sensitive area to break. So once we do get, if we do get that uh, continuation to the upside and we're able to hold the support and make a bounce, then that 216 price area would be a good target. Again, because we'll likely have to consolidate uh, after we continue upwards because this should act as an area of resistance because previously it was a strong area of support. So definitely keep an eye on that. But again, I do like the setup overall. And I'd be bullish pretty much above this, this lowest candle wick. So I'd be bullish really above kind of uh, 201 in terms of 
maintaining my bullish bias for this double bottom to play out, but there could be some selling below 201. So definitely think that there's good upside here. Uh, just again, keep an eye on the next few candles and, and watch to see if this low volume pullback plays out uh, and we get some reversal candles in to really try and continue this uptrend to the 216, 215 price area. So that's really what I like with Baidu. Again, I think it's my favorite setup that I'm going to cover tonight. So definitely a big fan of it. Really healthy pattern. Really nice to see the double bottom just having really a nice equilibrium in terms of the time that it took to form both of these bottoms. Um, so it's really nice to just see an even distribution in price uh, and then just a, a good breakout. But again, we're just kind of lacking the volume and the surge that we needed in price. So we're getting that throwback back to support and then hopefully bouncing from there. So again, really like Baidu. Uh, and I'd love to see it run to 215, 216 over the next few weeks. As far as Amazon goes, this is one that I definitely won't be playing, but I do think it's good just educationally to go over it because this is definitely kind of like a bear flag setup. Again, it's on the hourly time frame, so it's going to have a little less conviction than some of your longer term time frames that you're watching. But really, what we have here is a pretty strong downtrend that formed essentially starting at that like uh, 3,500 mark, 3,510. Um, and that's where our flag, our flag pole formed running down to this three, uh, essentially this 3,400 price level. Uh, just kind of rounding it to <laughs> make it a little easier. But essentially we ran down from 3,510 to 3,400 pretty quickly and on pretty heavy volume as well. And then we bounce and prices kind of channeled upwards. And really this is kind of like the flag. And, uh, and with these flag poles and, and both bearish and bullish flags, it's important to remember that the price targets are determined by, again, the height of the flag pole. So we take this 3510 and this you know 3400 essentially. Uh, and we subtract that to get the height of the flagpole, which gives us, you know, 115 or 120 uh, as the kind of full height of the flag. But then we look at the last touch of this resistance area. So in this uptrend, we measure the expected move from the last touch here. So it's going to be that 3470 price level. So Again, it's not measured from the break of support. It's measured from the last touch of resistance within the flag. So I think that that's something that's always important to touch on regardless, just because it's something where it's different than a lot of other price patterns. So it's something that's good to keep in mind. So again, I, I definitely won't be taking uh, any positions against Amazon just because I, I definitely don't like betting against Amazon, but just, looking at this purely from a technical standpoint, uh, I do think that this is just a nice, a nice setup for a bearish flag and a bearish flag, bearish breakdown and continuation. So really based on this, again, the height of the flag being around $115, percentage meeting price targets are pretty low for bullish and bearish flags, just again, because there's usually such a large expected move um, so again, sometimes it's difficult to maintain that bullish bias and then some profit taking occurs, uh, et cetera. So really what we're seeing is about a 55% uh, meeting price target. So taking that and applying it to the height of the flagpole again, puts us right in that $60 expected price move, which would really give us a potential move to like 3410, which again would align with an area that we gapped up from. So I do think that, you know, all things considered, this, this price target does make sense conceptually. But I just think in terms of Amazon, I just think there's way too much bullishness uh, with Amazon in general right now and in the market uh, in general. So I definitely won't be taking a play here, but I think it's a really good example of a clean setup for a bearish flag that you can look to model other bearish flags, or if you invert it, you can model other bullish flags off of a setup like this, where you can really see just a nice 
healthy continuation downtrend setting up. Um, and, and I really do think that uh, it's a nice technical setup overall. I just think that seeing uh, 3, 4, 10 uh, is just very unlikely, again, because of the bullishness in the, in the market and just because, again, it's Amazon and it's just the market leader. So uh, really nice setup overall, again, but I just doubt it plays out uh, as the technicals kind of claim it would. Again, part of the reason is also because this is on the hourly time frame. So it's, it's, uh, it's a chart time frame that can get overridden by a lot of other longer term views and a lot of other longer term biases. Uh, so there's a little less conviction on this time frame as well. But again, it's a really clean setup overall. Um, and if you guys have any questions or just want to discuss it, definitely let me know. Or if you want to draw up some bearish or bullish flags on other charts, other tickers and take a look at them, definitely let me know and I'd be happy to go over them with you. Uh, again, I just don't think this is one that's going to play out, even though I, I love this setup overall. It's just Amazon is just a beast. Um, and then looking at Disney, there's not too much going on here, in my opinion. Uh, I just think that we're going to be range bound for a little bit longer. So I don't think there's really too many high risk to reward trades to enter here at this point. Again, if you like trading ranges, then you could definitely try and trade this up to the next touch of resistance trying to get into that, you know, 178, 179 price area, or even potentially trying to tap this dynamic, uh, this dynamic price level, which should be the 50 day simple moving average. So again, if you like trading in ranges, then that's definitely something that you could do. Uh, but again, I prefer kind of trading the breakouts as opposed to trading ranges. So really for me, I, I really have to wait until this pattern develops a little more fully. Um, and then again, it, it kind of depends on really how this breaks out because typically triangles, especially symmetrical triangles are kind of continuation plays. And we obviously had a downtrend that was leading into this. So I'd be leaning a little bit more on the bearish side, but at the same time, uh, it's just very early in the process. And with symmetrical triangles, it's much better to just play the breakout as it happens rather than trying to kind of infer a direction because ultimately the consolidation phase is just so neutral. Uh, there really isn't any serious distinction or um, imbalance between the buyers and the sellers. So this is one where if I'm looking for a strong breakout play and, and a large move in price, then I'd really, I'd really want to wait until we get closer or until this range squeezes and gets tighter so that we could try and play a breakout of this range um, and, and potentially get you know a 10 or $15 move um, in a shorter time frame when we break out of this range, whether it's to the, to the upside or downside, uh, again, depending on when we get that price breakout and the volume confirmation. So ultimately, I do think that there will be a setup here in the near future. Uh, just in terms of trading a breakout, I don't think we're at that point yet. Um, a lot of you range traders could definitely take advantage of this, though, as it is just ranging in between these uh, the support and resistance of the symmetrical triangle. So that's really all I have for you guys today. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to me in the chat. Again, uh, Baidu, I think, has the best setup. Amazon is really just a good example of a bear flag. I definitely don't expect it to play out, but I do think it's a good, a good example for you to model bear flags off of uh, and just to see how they look conceptually and how to measure your price targets. Uh, again, because the bear flags, you have to take it, uh, take the height of the flagpole and use it against the last touch of uh, resistance as opposed to you know, the area where, where we broke out from. And then Disney, obviously, this is just premature, personally, for my trading style. But again, there definitely could be a play here if you like the ranging trade. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. And thank you so much for joining. And I hope that you guys have a great day.